I put on my thinking cap, you know, like romper room, and do my magic wand, and I suddenly think. <laughs> no, not exactly. <laughs> but I was, I sat down and I was having these thoughts, you know, because somebody recently said something to me that made me think. I got to thinking about this word we call respect, you know, and I was thinking, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, that is what you want from me, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, what it means to me, really be, you know, those kind of songs, you know, and those kind of things that, you know, we've all heard the cliches, you know, respect your elders, or respect this, or respect the flag, or respect the chain of command. I had to think about that. You see, when I hear something and it doesn't sound right, I get to thinking about it. Because if it doesn't sound right when I say it, I usually think that something's not right about it. Whenever I think something's not right about it, I look at the Word of God and I try to consider all the times that the word is used in the Bible. Now, that's just a practice, you know, it's just a religious thing I do, but it's something that, you know, helps me to begin to learn wisdom. Because it just gives me knowledge. It's not really wisdom yet, but it, it gives me knowledge of what maybe the Bible says about respect. So I usually kind of think about how many times I know of well, how many scriptures I can remember with the word respect in it. Hmm. Not so much. So I kind of, you know, start thinking about the word itself and how we use it and how people use it and abuse it and, you know, talk about it or have it or don't have it. And, you know, my mind kind of wanders and goes that direction. And I, I can think about all those things pretty fast. That's partially why whenever I hear something, if it doesn't sound right to me, then I go, hmm, why doesn't that sound right to me? Because, you know, I mean, obviously there's a part of it that is right. There's a part of it that maybe could be right. There's a part of it that maybe I understand it as sometimes maybe, and I'm not saying I agree, but might be right. But uh, I just didn't like it. I didn't think about it. I probably wouldn't pay much attention. Hold that thought for 30 seconds. I'm getting ready to jump in the bathtub, so I kind of had the water running in. The last time I did that, I did a recording, the water overflowed. Not here, <laughs> but in another place. So. I just realized that the water was running and I could hear it. It sounded like it was also going out, you know, that I didn't put the plug in properly. So the water was running in and running out, you know. But I figured I better, with this thinking about respect, maybe take the time to stop the water from flowing and getting in the bathtub because God speaks to me in the bathtub. So thinking about these things, I wanted to take some time, you know, to go to Him and read my devotionals in the bathtub and then let Him speak to me about some things that are on my mind, and one of those things is the word respect. Because, you know, I, I thought about how sometimes we use that word command respect, like somebody was awesome or inspiring and they commanded respect. You know, that was kind of like it made you or forced you to somehow respect whatever aspect there was about that person that you saw to respect. I'm not sure that I respect people. I'm not sure that I really inspect my understanding of this word when I look at the light of what Jesus said and what people are and the way the Bible writes about the nature of man. I'm not sure that I really respect the word respect much. Matter of fact, when I inspect it a little closer, I kind of, I kind of find myself at odds with some of the things that people want me to respect. You know, they'll tell me to respect the flag, and I think, 
Well, why? It's just a flag. Or respect my elders, and sometimes my elders are wrong. You know, and I, I honor my father and my mother. Now, honoring something is a little different than respecting them. You know, you could say that respect might be a part of honor. But I think that honor, the way that it's written and the way that the scriptures define it, it's a little different than respect. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that it's a lot different. So when I think about this word respect and the way we use it in modern America as well as when people say to me things like respect, it doesn't sound right to me because I almost hear pride being involved somewhere with the word respect. It's almost like out of pride or with pride we're supposed to respect something. To be proud of, you know, and then respect it because we're proud of it. Well, I'm kind of nervous about the word pride, you know. The Bible says a lot about pride, you know, and I'm kind of like, well, I don't know about you, but, you know, whenever I hear the word respect and pride together, I kind of think about, man, pride goeth before a fall, and, you know, I don't respect the fact that, you know, um, man in his infinite wisdom has rejected God and chosen to walk after his own lusts and flesh and everything else. So I don't really respect man's wisdom much. I love the Lord my God, you know, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and I honor my Father. I do the things that God has said, but I don't, I don't say where Jesus ever said respect, you know. He said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, you know. So I think about that. But every time I look at the word respect, it always seems to be someone in authority making someone in lesser position do something that prevents one from being equal to the other person. Now, I know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means I respect the scriptures for being an accurate way of portraying the truth about mankind in general. All means all. All have sinned. That means no one has not sinned. That means all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means everyone's fallen short of the glory of God. So I kind of go, well, so I, well, what do I respect here? Do I respect man? Do I respect men? Do I respect this, that, the other thing? I kind of get lost on the word respect all of a sudden because I'm not sure why I would respect something or someone that has fallen short of the glory of God. So you see, when I hear words and people say things to me and I know what the words mean and I see how they're phrased and how they're being used and I understand what the meaning of them are, I inspect myself to see where I come from and where I'm going with what I understand the word respect to be. For me, the word respect always means R-E-S-P-E-C-T, that is what it means to me, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. You know, and I, I, I can't get it out of my head. It's kind of a jingle. You know, I kind of think it's funny. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I kind of laugh when somebody tells me to respect somebody. I go, really? Can I just serve them? I mean, you know, I don't mind serving people. I kind of like being the servant of all. A, Jesus said it. B, Jesus did it. D, Jesus lived it. Jesus blesses it. I kind of like being that kind of way. Jesus says, if you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven, learn to be a servant of all. I like serving. That seems like a good idea. You know, I like going into, you know, like somebody once told me that I need to respect, you know, the rules and regulations that, you know, some church had. I went, well, I honor my Father in heaven by going into a house that's called by His name and I do so as unto the Lord Jesus because I don't want to, you know, get back to me what I've given out except that it be through grace and mercy. So I kind of I kind of accomplish what you may be saying respect is, but quite frankly, I think the rules are stupid. Or I think the regulations are dumb. And I'm not under the law, but I am a free man to do and to choose as I will, but I observe to do that which Jesus has commanded me, or Jesus has told me, or Jesus has said is a more excellent way. And so I choose the way of love over the way of law. Now, in halachot, 
or in the law or in the way that Jews have portrayed the law to be at some certain point in time when they have codified the law into these rules and regulations, respect meant a lot. You know, it had an idea behind Jewish way of defining it as being, living, and existing in the presence of the person you are becoming like and done to. So if you respected a rabbi, you lived with the rabbi, you became like the rabbi, you were the rabbi. So respect was to honor them and using their name. So like when we say, in Jesus' name, we're really saying what the rabbis have said and what people make fun of that are Christians, they'll say, well, Rabbi so-and-so says, and Rabbi Dario says, and according to Rabbi so-and-so. That's the same as saying, in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name, it's the same as saying that. That's from Rabbi so-and-so and Rabbi this and Rabbi that and Rabbi, you know. It's a rabbinical halachot. It's giving honor and credit where honor and respect is due. So you see, I'm kind of fascinated sometimes by some of the inadequacies or inaccuracies that we use when we are looking at someone else and say, oh, well, those dumb Jews, you know, they, they, they say Rabbi so-and-so or Rabbi Sheltiel or Rabbi Malachi or Rabbi Jonah, you know, said, and then they look at, you know, kind of like the Talmud and think that it's kind of silly. The Talmud is just a commentary. I mean, Spurgeon's a commentary. Hey, there's lots of commentaries around. They're not the Word of God, but they're commentaries. And so it's interesting that in Jewish culture, they understand what respect was, because respect was to live with, to honor, and to be a part of, as well as to be the personification of that person, in the realization of knowing that person so well and so intimate that you would know what they would do in those circumstances and situations, that you found themselves in because you saw them doing it. You lived what you said you believed. Now, did they do it? No, but they wrote it. Oh, well, that's the way it works in Judaism. They write it, but they don't live it. Jesus said, pay attention to what the Pharisees say, but watch what they do. Because they don't do what they say. They can say what's right. Lots of times you'll see that there's a lot in Jewish culture. There's magnificent writings in Jewish history and Jewish background. But that doesn't mean they did it. It just means they were trying to attain to it. I kind of think that's what's true about respect. A lot of people say it, but they don't do it. You know, I can watch people in action say they respect the flag and then turn around and sure enough, down the road, sooner or later, they don't respect the flag. I can see people say, you know, to respect them or to respect your elders or respect your whoever. And sooner or later, I personally can catch them not respecting who they said they respect. I think that's what it means that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God because really when you want and demand something you can't follow through with it. But when you're given an opportunity to do something and then the choice is yours to try or not and then God adds the increase I think that's honoring something greater than yourself and giving respect to where we should give respect and where respect is due. And that isn't unto you or me. Because, matter of fact, I don't think that respecting your elders really, even though it may be a scripture, it may be applicable in some way. I think there's more to that word if we really looked at it than really what people are using it today as. And I'm just not comfortable with the word respect. I'm sorry. It just doesn't seem like it's really got the oomph that honor does or the uh, that the power of the Holy Spirit seems to give for us to complete that with which Jesus said to do because I think love does cover respect I think if you love someone they don't need respect they feel loved and appreciated they feel overwhelmed by your devotion and emotion I think that love really is the better way because reverence is one thing. Fear of God is another. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, but it's not the end. Love is the end of wisdom. Love is God. God is love. And what we do find is that while you may fear God and be distant from Him, 
If you love God, you're near to Him. And the nearer you can get to God, the better you are. So really, the love of God brought us into the intimacy and the knowledge of God with which Jesus died for our sins. So really, love is the answer to everything today, just like the song used to say. And love really is beyond so much more than respect that we really find ourselves, if we choose to love, going beyond this simple word, this simple statement, this, I would say, bad idea of respect. Because you see, I can respect you, but that doesn't mean I love you. I could respect you, and that doesn't mean I honor you. I could respect you, and that doesn't mean that I really care about you at all on the inside. Respect is something that technically is a smoke screen to cover what's going on on the inside. Because respect doesn't have anything to do with what's going on on the inside. But honor does, because it does talk about the attitude of the heart. So you see, I'm not sure that respect really is where we want to be, because respect is superficial. But if you want to be spiritual, you get back to the heart of the matter, which is love. Because the fruit of the Spirit is peace, love, and joy. The aspects of love is meekness, kindness, gentleness, temperance, and all those qualities with which we really aren't on the outside, but we can be on the inside and it can come flowing out of us at times that God uses us for those particular moments with which we are filled and overflowing with the Holy Spirit that people see Jesus and give Him credit and glory for what God has done, not what we are doing. So, for me, sitting here thinking on these things, considering the word respect, I don't know, you know? I might change my mind. I might give a teaching on respect and find out that, man, you know, I, I, I've been looking at this and thinking about it and talking to God about it. And I found this scripture and that scripture and the Holy Spirit spoke to me on this and He showed me that and I went this and that and the other thing and God poured it all in me and I went, bing, you know, and He opened my eyes suddenly to understanding I didn't have and wisdom that I didn't know and He made it whole and He made it complete and now I see Jesus in respect and my perspective has changed about the Word and now I say, oh, look, what respect is. But every time I think about the Spirit of God, I doubt it. So, I don't know about you, but you know, call me foolish, call me a simple mind, Call me narrow-minded, maybe in some ways, because I only want to use the scriptures I really know and apply that seem to work and are fulfilled in the volume of the book from cover to cover that are applicable all the way through, that apply to everyone and everything you do. I think love is the answer. And I really think love is always going to be my response to anyone who says respect, or R-E-S-P-E-C-T me, you know, or to pay respect or feel like any respect is due. Because you see, God so loved the world, not that he respected it or, or that he objected to it. He just said he loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in should not perish but everlasting life. He so loved. If love is good enough for God, it's good enough for me. I know, you know, there's still people out there that are going to want respect because they live in the world. They, they are going to be a soldier and they're going to want to be saluted. They're going to be like a Gentile and they want to exercise lordship over one another. And I think that respect comes along with Gentiles acting like the world and its ways, not like being children of their Father in Heaven, which says, you're all equal before me, guilty, but you're all equal before me, accepted, not because of what you've done, but because according to His mercy, I am saving you by what my son has done, I think if I honor the Word of God, if I honor God, if I honor Jesus by doing what they say, then love covers not just a multitude of sins, but love, love will cover that fleshy desire for respect, needing to be respected, and love will cover all aspects of the Word.
respect. So, maybe I'm right. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have issues with respect. And God wants to drive it home to you. But you know, I don't object to someone, you know, telling me they want respect. I don't object to someone commanding respect from me. I don't object to anyone at all, really, saying all kinds of things to me. I'm just going to love them. See if that covers what they need. Because you know what? Love covered my needs. And I think love can cover your needs. That is, if the love is coming from God. 